children, but we were treated as if we had no right to feel that way, right? So we were told and treated as if we were not victims. And so as adults, we don't know how to say, wait a minute, I really, I was a victim. There's almost shame in acknowledging there was a time in my life where I was a victim. And that's victim blaming. We're blaming the victim for feeling like a victim. And that's just not appropriate. This video is really to help those, those of you, and this includes myself, who have felt like a victim and have been victimized, you know, through alcoholism or mental health issues with family members, gambling, you know, uh, domestic violence, emotional neglect, narcissism, all of that crap. It's about acknowledging, wait a minute, there was a point in my life where I was a victim. And as an adult, I have to acknowledge that I was a victim. And then on the road to recovery, I would also like to acknowledge that I no longer want to wear this jacket. You know, I don't want to wear the sweater of shame anymore. I don't want to walk through life with this victim mentality, with this the stain of being a victim, because I want to live an abundant life. I don't want to constantly get into arguments with other people. I don't want to walk around feeling overly sensitized to what's happening around me. I want to be free. Everybody, so I today I want to talk about a very sensitive topic. And so often people write me and, you know, they let me know that um, someone has accused them of playing the victim because playing the victim or feeling like a victim is tied to feeling powerless, to feeling like you have no choices. You know, your choices are being taken, taken away from you, which in my humble opinion goes back to childhood because I think that when we're frustrated as children and we feel so powerless as children, and there are so many reasons to experience powerlessness from emotional neglect to sexual abuse to um, domestic abuse to alcoholism in the family. I mean, you name it, you know, living with a parent who has a mental health issue, living in a home that's unpredictable, it makes you feel powerless. Living with a mom or a dad that's a rager, right? And you're walking around on eggshells. You end up feeling powerless. A person who's willing to like look within and say, what's wrong with me? How can I change? Is gonna have the greatest chance of success. And the people who are not looking at, well, how can I change, you know, to live a more joyous life, you're gonna get stuck. Don't necessarily think that's your fault because in my humble opinion, we're all products of our environment. When I was recovering um, from uh, codependency, I had to come face to face with the reality that I felt powerless and that um, I thought the world should be a certain way. And I think what happened to me as a little girl, you know, in this black and white world, I thought, well, if mommy just hugged me or if mommy, if I could make mommy smile or, you know, if I can keep daddy happy or if I can keep myself small, if I could find some way to gain some sense of connection with the people that I love, then I would be okay. So I developed a lot of fantasy type thinking and I was downloaded with a bunch of rules, you know, following my mom, you know, never complain, make sure the house is clean, you know, and I also learned that you, that, you know, you shouldn't have your own life. You shouldn't take care of yourself. Everybody has to come before you, um, you know, if, it, take care of people, rescue people, be over responsible for people who aren't responsible for themselves and just lose yourself in the experiences of other people, you know, um, and never really finding a sense of self. And being downloaded with that type of information sets you up to be, um, have a very problematic life because you really do think that the rules that your brain is playing by are going to net you a specific set of results. And when they don't, you don't know what to do. So a lot of unresolved powerlessness, right? And then, as we get older, you know, um, we're not these little children anymore. We're adults and our thinking is has changed, right? So all of the anger that we weren't allowed to feel as children, I think can begin to bubble to the surface when we're adults. And what I wasn't able to feel towards a parent who I feel maybe abandoned me or neglected me or abused me, I'm now going to, you know, deal with that in this relationship. So it's sort of like this misplaced anger um, and I think that when we mix powerlessness up with unresolved anger and frustration and disappointment and feelings of abandonment, you've got the soup of a victim mentality. Now that's not our fault. That's just, it's really the, the effect 
right? Um, and of a cause that we were powerless to control. And so those of us who are really trying to heal from what's happened in the past, we really have to start being more objective when we think people should be a certain way and we they don't do what we want them to do. Um, or if we're constantly on the lookout for the next attack, we are approaching life from the, from the position of a victim. And in my opinion, if you've been victimized as a child, of course, you're not gonna grow up and be this self-confident, self-loving human being who, you know, with the healthy sense of narcissism, like, you know, I've got my stuff together and I'm confident and whatever comes my way, I'll be able to handle it. And if people don't like me, that's okay. Listen, if you come from an amazing background where you were taught that you were valued and your parents were healthy human beings and you have a healthy sense of narcissism and you know that, you know, bumps in the road are just normal parts of growth, you know, as a human being. And, you know, within yourself is you have the ability to, to meet those challenges, more power to you. But I think the rest of us are like struggling to try to figure it out and we're doing the best that we can, right? Um, and so we need tools. We absolutely need tools. For me, the first tool is self-awareness. It's like, I have to become self-aware of what I'm doing wrong. I can't fix a hole in the wall that I can't see. And it blew my mind when I realized that I was operating my life as a codependent person, as a people pleaser, as a fixer, as a doer for everyone else but myself, you know, um, you know, playing the martyr, taking care of everybody else, then complaining about it, like, what about me? I didn't realize, you know, that I was seeking a sense of validation outside of myself. I didn't really realize that. Um, and it was huge when it hit me and I said, I've got to be able to see this and stick with this and really transcend it. And it was so freeing to detach myself from this idea that other people had to be a certain way. It was so freeing to accept people just as they were. It was so freeing to say, oh my God, I'm supposed to be navigating this 3D experience, honoring how I feel, paying attention to how I feel and doing what I can to live not through the ego. So living not through the ego means I have to release this idea that I'm a victim. But again, we need tools to do that. Nobody wants to walk around feeling that way unless you really have narcissism, unless you're really somebody who wants to position themselves as a victim, who is constantly looking to hurt other people, make someone else the target of what's unresolved within them, then that's different. Um, people who don't want to walk through life like that, you know, have a chance to heal. So I want to offer you some of the things that I've learned to do on my journey. So number one is we have to identify the feeling of powerlessness from childhood. So if you can identify as somebody who walks around like, um, that feels like a victim all the time, um, it's really important that you spend the time and you identify when in your life did you feel powerless or did you always feel powerless? Because what happens in the past, it seeps through in our, in our adult lives. It's impossible for it not to because it's up programming. So see if you can um, find out and figure out and process, like when did I feel powerless as a child? Um, because that really has to be identified um, because again, you can't fix a hole in the wall, you can't see. So name it, call it, label it. So you understand, oh, okay, I feel this way maybe because of that. You know, I recently had a discussion with my uh, middle daughter who has felt abandoned and very much replaced by her dad. And she said, she said, I feel replaced. And she struggles sometimes um, feeling that way as a, you know, an adult woman feeling replaced. And I understand that that is, she has a wound there. Um, and I do my best to try to help her become aware of that because the more aware that we are of how past experiences can really seep into our adult relationships, then the more control we have over them. Because it's not fair to take what happened to us as children and then project it onto other people in our life and to blame them for how we're feeling. If we've got a wound inside of us that needs to be healed, that's up to us to heal it. And it ain't easy to do, but it's worth the effort. So number two, you have to work at understanding that it's a big world and nobody has to agree with you. 
And there are people that who will agree with you. You will find your vibe tribe, so to speak, right? You got to keep at it. But it was so freeing when, because I was constantly seeking validation as a child. And if I dared have a different opinion than my, especially my father, then we were criticized for that. We were mocked and humiliated. So this idea that it's wrong to think different than other people, it's got to be careful with that because that also implies that people should think like you. Freeing. And so that really helps you realize like, well, I'm not really a victim here. This person just has a different opinion, you know? Um, and it's really up to me to be okay and to see this person as an individual, right? I don't need this person's validation. I, I don't have to come at this situation with a, no sense of self. I can honor my own experience and not need this person to validate it. Or it's okay if this person doesn't agree with me. And it's okay if this person and I are no longer friends because our, our opinions are so different. So it's releasing ourselves from the need to agree with other people and also releasing the other person from the, from the need to have to agree with us. Um, number three, so you have to monitor your use of the word should. My husband should have done this. My wife should have done that, right? There's so much involved there. There's judgment, there's anger, there's frustration, there's disappointment, there's, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. But when we are thinking that people should do this and should do that, we're in, we're in the dangerous zone. And because when you feel like a victim, you're not happy. When you feel like a victim, your vibrations aren't where you need them to be in order to manifest the life that you want. When you feel and operate and think and posture yourself as a victim, you're also teaching your children to do the same thing. So it's very important. And you know, if you pay attention to when you use the word should, let that be a trigger for you and ask yourself, who am I judging? You know, in, in this situation, where do I feel powerless? Where is my hidden anger? Where is my hidden disillusion, disillusionment? Where am I making this other person responsible for my state of being? It helped me and I hope that that helps you. Number four is work on accepting your emotions, right? So um, when we're little and we're, we are raised by people who, um, and let's face it, most of us, you know, um, have been wounded, right? Yeah. Emotions were meant to be felt. It's okay that in this situation, I'm feeling powerless. It's okay. It's okay that I feel frustrated in this situation. I don't have to kick the dog or take it out on my wife or take it out on my, my husband or my children. It's okay that I'm experiencing frustration from a higher state of awareness, from the seat of the observer. I can experience, you know, emotions like I, exp like I experience food, like, oh, this is just an experience. When I'm angry, I, wow, I can experience this anger. I can observe the experience of anger. I don't have to react to anger. Learning to accept how we feel is huge. So I just hope that you've, you've, anybody out there who's listening, I just hope that you're receiving this video message in this spirit of which it was sent. And that is to just share what I've learned so that you can live a more emotionally deliberate and emotionally free life. You know, things outside of us should no longer control us. And, um, you know, it's awesome to know that you are enough and that you are worthy and what happens outside of you no longer has to control you anymore. Um, that's where true liberation lies. So thank you so much for being here. My name is Lisa Romano. I'm the Breakthrough Life Coach and best-selling author and the creator of the 12-Week Breakthrough Coaching Program. The 12-Week Breakthrough Coaching Program is an online class that I moderate myself along with a team and I host it twice a year. And what we do, it's a class that's really for people who are struggling with codependency, for people who come from dysfunctional homes, who may feel like victims and who don't want to feel like victims anymore. Um, it's a class for people who want to learn how to process their emotions while staying in their body. It's a class for people who want to finally face what needs to get faced so they can push past it, move past it, process it, um, and live a more authentic life. And I moderated along with the team. And like I said, we host it online twice a year. If you're interested in this type of help on the recovery journey, the links are in the description box. If you'd like to listen to one of my books for free, you can also do that by going to audible.com. Links are in the description box. Mm -hmm. Remember, as long as we are, we are attached or connected to anything outside of us, 
that we can't control will never be happy. So remember that you are enough. Remember that people are entitled to their opinion of you. Everybody has an opinion and you're entitled to your opinion of other people. Know that powerlessness, is, powerlessness from childhood is absolutely real and it's valid. But as adults, we can move into a higher state of awareness and we can learn to let go. Um, and I just hope this video helped you do that today. So namaste everybody until next time. Bye for now.